So in this lesson, we're going to create our first Require.js project. So first of all, I'm just going to show you guys the docs. So if you go to require.js.org, here's the website for the library. So plenty of documentation here on how to get started. Um, plenty of information about the library itself and how to use it. So if you do go to start, you've got some good examples here. Um, of different Require.js uh, projects. These are also some good starting materials. You've got a simple one-page app, a multi-page app, multi-page app with shim, config. So we're going to cover all of this in our section. We're going to build out a Require.js project ourselves. Um, but just for just to note, this might be, be useful as you're getting started and familiar with the library. Okay, so I'm going to go and create a new folder in our projects file, projects folder called require.js. So let's open a new Visual Studio. Close this now. And as usual, we're just going to open a new folder. Um, we're going to open our require.js folder. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to create an index.html file. I'm going to create a main.js file. And then I'm going to create a folder containing our libraries. So I'm going to call this lib. And in this, let's create a require.js file. Okay, so in index.html, we're going to start with our boilerplate. I'm going to change the title to Introduction to Require.js. Okay, and the first thing we need to do is actually load the library. So we have to actually go back to the docs. And let's go get the files. Go to the download page. I'm going to go to latest release here, 2.3.6, and let's load it. Minified, well, that just is going to the library. So I'm going to use Control A to copy everything, Control C, and then I'm just going to paste that all in to our require.js file and save. So there is our require.js library. Okay, cool. So now in index.html, we saw the syntax. So we're going to include one script tag. And data main is our entry point for our project. And our entry point for this project is going to be main.js. This is going to contain um, our require function. Uh, in the future, it's also going to contain our config, but it's going to be the main JavaScript file. Um, also with our JavaScript functionality. So we're going to be looking in the current folder for main. And then we're going to load our require.js file, which is in library and require.js. So as discussed in the last lesson, so the data main attribute tells require.js to load scripts so as discussed in the last lesson, so the data main attribute is telling Require.js to load this main file after we've loaded Require.js. So in our main.js file, we now need to use the require function. You can call this Require.js. So this syntax works. Or you can change this to require either way. Um, works. So the reason you can use either is that some environments might already have a require. So in which case require.js can be used uh, for the require.js library. So the require function is used to load dependencies, um, but this method runs immediate functionalities. So it will load everything um, which you require here. When we come on to define, um, define is used for a slightly different use case. Um, both use to load dependencies, 
um, but define is used to more define modules for use in multiple locations. So here if we just add an alert, what we can do is see if this has worked. So we can copy the path and I'm just going to paste it in here. And then you can see it looks good. We have loaded the this load me alert and we have loaded that file using require.js and you can see we've got no errors in there. So that's all well and good, um, but obviously the, the point of require.js is actually being able to load uh, dependencies. So let's have a go at loading a dependency. So say we had a second file in our libraries folder called dependency.js. And we need this, say we need to load dependency.js before main.js. So I'm going to add an alert. I am needed first. And main, and then we we'll go back to main.js. I can say this, change this to load me second. Okay, so what we can actually do is in our require function, we can name this dependency and load it. So in our require function, we can actually list our dependency.js file, and then that will be loaded first before we execute this function. So we'll be loading that dependency and then executing this function. So the alerts load me first, will be triggered first, and then the alerts load me second. So this operates like a callback function. So only once the dependency is loaded, will this function be executed. Um, it's also an example of a synchronous JavaScript, uh, which we're going to move on to uh, in a future lesson. So let's require this function. So we need to require library and dependency. And let's have a look. And then you can see that we have trigger an alert which says I am needed first and then load me second. So remember what we're doing, so we've loaded our required JS library and then we've point and then we've loaded our main file. And then in our main file we are loading a dependency before executing our JavaScript. So that dependency here is our dependency.js file. In the next lesson, we're going to be looking at require.js configs.